Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Thought I would do a tutorial today, or or, or attempt it. Uh, we'll see how it comes out. But uh, first, I th just thought I'd show you some random thing I built uh, yesterday. Um, I, it was basically, it started out as a block experiment to mess with an awful lot of these half blocks. Um, and I started out building like this frame um, with these half, half blocks. And I, was, I wasn't really planning on making anything out of this. I was just kind of wanted to try some things and see how it came out and uh so yeah that's kind of what it was about but now i'm thinking it probably ought to become a poi um it won't work well as a player base i don't think um it's just not the right kind of thing for a player base it would be really expensive for the room and space and lack of function but uh yeah i'll work on uh turning this into a poi uh might end up being um See, I'd like to do a MCR NPOI, but it, it, it's because of the lure of that being uh, related to the expanse, it just wouldn't be a good idea. So I think it'll be SCAR. I don't believe it would look very Creel-like either. But MCR, and if it was MCRN, I guess I could color it that way, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a lot, lot, lot of debates here. But anyway, to the to the tutorial. So what, so what I wanted to do on this tutorial is create a situation um, of building like an interior space with not a perfect interior to work with. So I built this random cluster of blocks here, um, trying to simulate like this is part of a CV or base and uh, you have this space inside of here. I'm just trying to come up with a, a, a realistic scenario. So it's not like perfectly square. It's got like these angle things uh, we'll just say, you know, the, the hall is out on this side, and you've got this uh, elevator coming in over here, and you've got, like, another room over on the other side over here. And this is this is the area you have to work with, which I'm just trying to make it, like, um, plausible. You know, like, like this, this would be a typical scenario that you might be in. So I wanted to go through the steps of what I personally do when I, uh, when I look at every room, once I figured out, like, where a room's going to be and whatnot um so the, the the first goal would be to try to figure out well what do you want in this room so in in this scenario i'm thinking i want a 320k storage i want a uh, a large constructor or advanced constructor um we'll say we want uh o2 and i don't know how about uh how about a crew quarters okay so we got uh 320k storage constructor O2, we'll just say some medical equipment and uh, crew crew area. So that 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 is our objective goal for the room, um, what we want to accomplish with it. So first step I want to do in this kind of scenario is uh, the the thing that's most most critical first and where I want to start is dealing with the storage. Um, so let me grab some. Uh, I'll grab a container controller and some container extensions. So, where should we put the constructor? See, I want to know where the constructor is going to go because I personally like to put a, a controller right next to the constructor. It just uh, typically works out pretty good. Now, some of these blocks I can modify. Um, some of them, if they're hull blocks and shaped on the outside, I, I can't touch those. And I got to leave whatever I'm doing, I got to leave like this surface flat because we'll just say there's another room here or a landing pad or something that I cannot mess with the exterior blocks there um, so the first scenario here I'm I, I'm just sitting back thinking like how how am I gonna get uh, a nice controller in and uh, keep everything kind of aligned here so let's say uh, let's say we want to put the uh, the constructor right here and then we're gonna put a controller right on the side of that um, so let's say these blocks here I could modify. Um, say this goes further on to the uh, the front of the ship. This is all you know hypothetical. It's just uh, trying to create a random scenario. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to I'm going to pop out that block and put in one here. And basically, oh I can't do that. Um, I'm trying to uh, slap in a controller like right here, and then I don't have space over here for. Uh, the two by two by two constructor 
and the goal was also to hit 320k with this um, so obviously you can't texture these uh, cargo extensions the same as you can regular regular uh, blocks or regular regular things so I want to try to hide as many of them as I can but uh, with 320k there's no way I'm gonna be able to hide them all um, so I'll be like poking up and seeing if I can remove a block above like okay well I got this kind of doubled up over here so let's let's pull out that block and this block and I'll just kind of build this up and can I do this one too kind of well we'll see I can't because this is now exposed to the exterior of the uh, the ship so I can't put a controller there so a lot of times when I do this I'll remove a block and then I'll hit undo um, See, I just poked into the hull of the ship. Again, this is just trying to simulate a uh, uh, more plausible scenario here. Oh, can't can't do that block either because that's part, that's part of the hull. So, if you get 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 what I got going on, um, well, let's say I can mess with the floor though. Um, so, I'm gonna rip out the floor over here and replace a bunch of that with more of these and I always put in the controller right off the gate so I can instantly check to see how much storage I have in here um, so I don't usually count as I'm going all right well to save room I'm just going to keep on removing as much of this floor as I can to get as many of these cargo extensions in as I can um, these may get shifted later on though, or some of them, um, due to texture purposes. Um, and we'll just put in a couple more there. Okay, so we got this even area. We're up to 224K now. I want to hit 320. Um, I don't want to mess with these blocks here because of texturing, and that's a hallway. That's a walkway. So I, I uh, uh, container extensions do not provide you with like literally any reasonable texture for a walkway which is kind of wish they uh, wish they had some more textures available but I'll just keep on doing this here so we're at 272 I'll just make it simple and keep on adding them this way because this is we'll just say this is where I got the space to add it Okay, 320. So I hit 320, but I don't know if I hit exactly 320. So I will uh, remove one. Okay, now we're at 312. So I do that often too to make sure I'm not using any more uh, container extensions than I need to because they do cost CPU more so in, in uh, vanilla than Reforged Eden, but they do cost CPU. All right, so now we have established our our controller system, and we know we're going to put a constructor here, and we know it's going to fit. So uh, other other parts. Let's say we want to add in here. Let me grab some medical stuff here a minute. Um, say we wanted a little medical stuff over here. So say I pop in. Uh, I want a health thing. Um, and this is just kind of like early layout. Let's let's just do the full full setup here. So. Let's do health, one of these, one of these, one of these. I'll just say I want these uh, laid, laid flat like this this time. Kind of mixed up every time. Okay, so we got our full medical suite, and I kind of want um, O2 in here too. I usually like to put O2 right next to it. And as of late, I do like to put in showers as well. Um, due to the, uh, the radiation, it's another uh, feature that I think is helpful for gameplay let's see where is the o2 and with so many parts too it's easy to not be able to find a part that you're looking for so a lot of times i will uh try to remember the name of the part um i'm trying to remember the name of the oxygen thing i thought it was just uh o2 something or other but that didn't seem to come up with anything where is it where is it? Okay, let's go over here again. Oh, two, oh, two, oh, two. Uh, yeah, yeah. Despite all the building I do with this, I still have problems finding parts sometimes. Um, there it is. O2 station. Well, whatever. When I typed in O2, it didn't actually find it. In this case, most of the time it does. So, 
Okay, so O2. So this is all kind of weird over here. Um, let's say we put O2 here. And let's say next to the O2, we want to pop in a... Uh, do I have those parts available? It's actually under deco furnishings. Um, I want to pop in a shower. So I'm going to put, it, put in a shower there. And this is just preliminary layout here. Okay, so we've got that. We've got this. Um, and all right. So we kind of got our general thing laid out here on what we want in this room. Now, the rest of it is finishing off the room. So typically, interior space, I typically will use carbon substrate. I'll look at uh, a few different aspects of this, like... Um, when, when doing the, the sides, what I want to do is kind of form a, like a uniformity, um, but also chaos. <laughs> so chaos meaning I don't want it to be like all the same going all the way around the room. Um, but I do want to have like something that uh, kind of balances it off. Um, in other words, like maybe a, a angled wall line or something that kind of is somewhat uniform on maybe this wall and this wall, but it could be different over here or broken up in another space. And then you've got this awful dreaded area that this is like one block high and, and you think, oh man, you can't do nothing with this space. It's kind of dead space and that. Uh, I used to think that way too. Like it's just not very good usable room. And, it, and it's not, but you can do a lot of stuff with it visually at least. Um, all right, so we have this established. Um, I'm going to say just hypothetically, I cannot remove these blocks here. Like, I would love to rip these blocks out and make this nice looking, like, little beveled edge that goes all the way to the corner here, but I can't because that's part of the hull of the ship, so we, we, we can't do it that way. Um, we're going to have to find a different way. So, let's start in this corner here, and I also know I want an LCD above this, so I can't, I can't really block that off from having an LCD there. Um, so, let's start with things here. Uh, I'm going to grab one of these weird bevel blocks here a minute and uh, mess with it, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it that way. But this is, uh, by looking at those blocks, so this is more of like a 22.5 uh, degree angle or a 2-1 ratio. So let's, let's start here, and I'll pop in one there and one there, and put in its counterpart here and here so I can make a nice angled thing but we can't we can't put a block here though because that's going to be an LCD display um, okay so we've got that over there um, let's try to simulate the same angle on the other side of the room um, for uh, put in some uniformity so I will uh, reverse this around and uh, so if I didn't do that right, there we go. This is the angle we want that at. So I'll do something similar here, and I'm going to just have to add in a full block here to make that work right. So we've got we've got this going on now, and this kind of matches that. And that's that's where I'm what I was talking about about some form of uniformity. Now, the rest of the room doesn't need to be doing that, though. All right, so we've got this uh, this open area up on the ceiling here. Um, it's not really necessarily, I guess it's kind of centered, sort of, but it's not really. Like it doesn't, you know, it would be neat if it lined up to the perfect thing, but I'm just going to say I can't do that because this is part of the whole block, and those are shaped on the other side, and I can't, I can't touch those. Um... So what would I do here? Um, what I want to do is, is even though this is a three by three by three area, um, I'm looking at like the uh, the bigger part in here, the constructor, which is two by two, and I don't want this to be a three three. Like if I were to, to cut in or add some blocks here, I don't want that to be off centered to the constructor. So what I'm going to do right off the gates um, is fill this those in, so this is more uniform here, um, and then I want to a block pattern something um, anything I can uh, figure out that would go in here in this case uh, I mean there's so many different options available for this kind of thing but I'm just gonna go with kind of a say we're gonna have this uh, roundest thing here um, 
just just for uh, cosmetic purposes only and uh, let's see what else could we put in the middle there um, how about we put in some uh, these uh, kind of dual half blocks so we get like this little beam thing going there okay so now we've got a little little something to look at in the ceiling it's centered with this area over here um, okay so now this part here um, kind of working around the room and this is this is uh, every time I build an interior I usually follow this process um, I start with uh, where do I want to put the main parts um, and then uh, like I determine I want the constructor here but before I even mess with that first thing is putting in storage because storage is going to affect your block work and your and your overall design um, and then once I establish that then I go around the room and try to make it prettier essentially and that's and that's what this part is about now what I don't like here though is I got the O2 right there and it's right next to this and I kind of want a wall separation if possible there so that means I need to move the O2 somewhere else um, so we've got this kind of bold line right here I think in this case I'm just gonna run another full block here for the time being to keep that kind of evened out um, and I you know to keep it all even too I'm thinking what I may do is pull this piece and we'll just add in a couple uh, a couple more of these blocks of course the the least amount of these full blocks you can fill in the area with the bigger interior space you'll get so that's just something to consider too so the more you do the more or the less room you're gonna end up having in this thing um, but in this case, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say I want to put these two parts over here now. Um, the, uh, or, nah, you know what, let's, let's put them here. Let's put them here. Like medical, and then we'll pop in the oxygen. These don't rotate very neatly, so you're just going to have to kind of deal with that a little bit. All right. And with all that being done... Uh, and also the least amount of like square walls I can have usually the better it's just another rule so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that block I just put in replace it with some kind of bevel uh, but I just want to make sure the bevel kind of lines up okay with the wall like I'm, I'm running a 22.5 degree angle slope that way if I go this way it kind of it goes it's doing a 22.5 in the opposite direction which I don't really want to do here so I will flip that so it kind of is the same. Um, and I will do that actually to the two full blocks I just put in over here as well. Uh, but then we lost our uniformity here on the top. So let's, uh, let's just try to match that if possible. Actually, that's not, it's just not going to work out well at all, though. So let's make a new display around here. I like to, you know, if I can, like, put everything on display like you're, like, in a retail store or something, and you're, and you're displaying these, these parts in some kind of kiosk kind of thing. Well, not kiosk, but, you know, you know what I mean, like a, a shop display. Ooh, I used the wrong part for this. So I'm using some other angled blocks just to make a wedge pattern around the uh, medical stuff there and I, for uniformity purposes I want to keep that all consistent all the way around just basically creating a little outcove for it for uh, for now I'm just gonna put some full blocks back here these might get replaced once this area over here gets looked at all right so now we've kind of got our layout here we've got the parts we wanted at least around those rooms we know that this is a hallway this is going to be a door over here um, let me get a door a couple doors actually um, say we put a door in front of the elevator there and another door over here do we want to do it on that side yeah let's do it on this side okay all right Oh, another thing that, you know, we're going to need in the room, too, can't can't forget about the simple stuff, is oxygen uh, or a ventilator. 
Uh, usually, I'm gonna, I'm not, you know, honestly, I'm gonna wait till the end on that though. So I've got some extra room, and I'll, of course, I want to get as much detailed things in here as possible. Uh, so maybe I'll go out of the. I like to use, you know, throw an occasional cargo box. Not that they're the most super useful in the game, but they, a lot of the cargo boxes do tend to look pretty decent. So they, um, I'm kind of almost using them more as a, a cosmetic thing as opposed to, you know, actual function. But this is kind of a nice spot for some cargo right here. Um, this, this line here doesn't really line up to it, but we, that can be modified. All right, so... Yeah, it's just, uh, I'll just plug in a couple uh, cargo boxes there. And now, this part. This part here, I think, could stand to be changed. Basically, I kind of want this to be, uh, kind of line up better with that. So I'm going to put in a couple more full blocks here. So now we've got kind of a smooth edge there. Alright, so... Now this lower area down below, um, that doesn't look bad squared off, but it could look a little better if there's something going on there. Um, so I'm going to put in some other uh, blocks here that maybe match that same angle, but indented just a little bit so we got a bit of a, a edge over the, the side there. So like that, and let's do something very similar on the other side here. That will uh, actually line up quite well to the door. Okay. All right. So now getting into this area, this area just sucks. Um, well, let's just say like up here, we got a landing deck. So this might be exterior space, but it just needs to be flat. So that basically gives me the green light to play with blocks on the ceiling over here. So it's all just full blocks right now. Pretty boring. Um, let's do stuff with it. So I'm going to rip out a bunch of these blocks. And this is a lot of times where I end up like, if I textured the hull prior, I end up having to retexture parts of the exterior of the ship because I blow away chunks like I'm doing right here. So what I want to do here is obviously we need a ceiling that needs to be combat steel, we'll just say, um, and I want to do something with the ceiling. Um, so, so many different methods of uh, doing things with the ceiling. Let's say I want to make this area look as big as I possibly can. Uh, that would be the use of thin blocks, I think, would be uh, the big thing. But I'm also kind of looking at like its general frame. Can I line this side up evenly to this side? Kind of, kind of. So let's let's go that route. Um, actually, I don't even need combat steel blocks on this row for doing that. So basically, the idea here is I want to build some kind of frame around here. Um, and of course, if I use thinner blocks, it's going to appear bigger. So let's see if we do something like that. And let's see in the corners here. Let's, uh, huh. I don't know if this is the right block. Nah, I'm going to scrap using these right, right, right now. Let's, let's just do, uh, let's do something a little bit different. Uh, I'll just go straight, straight thin block. And then in the corners here, we will, uh, let's do one of these multi surface thin blocks around the edge. And I got a little bit of something going on in the middle here. Uh, that's okay. Keep it simple. Sometimes simple is better too. Okay, so now we just got this open square going into this area. And now we need to start adding some more combat steel to fill in the hole that we just ripped away. Um, uh, Alright, so let's, uh, I'm going to grab one of these that has the edge that will match the thin block that I placed in. We'll just put one there because I don't technically need to uh, put in more combat steel blocks there. If I do, it'll add more weight. 
um, depending on the creation. If this was a base, I wouldn't really care, but it's still going to add more cost to it. So even if you're not concerned about weight, there's a cost factor. And this is much cheaper doing it that way. All right. Um, it's pretty boring in here yet, though. So what can we do here? So a lot of times, like, when I place a block like this, I know that if I'm looking at this angle here, and it, and it kind of looks like these little diamond shapes on this edge, um, that this is a separate texturable area from the other side. I get this wrong sometimes when I'm building stuff, and I, I have to replace some blocks or rotate those blocks occasionally to fix that when, when texturing, which we haven't actually got to yet. Um, so let's say we do that, and I'm going to kind of reverse, well, hmm. Yeah, you know what, let's just keep it simple. Put in some uh, half blocks, so kind of start at a thin, go into a thing, to a half, so we've got this kind of multi-tiered ceiling over there with a little border around it now. Um, I got our flat floor. All right, so let's get into some other deco, deco things here. Uh, say we wanted our little crew quarter thing over here somewhere. Um, but it would be kind of neat if it was actually kind of walled off a little bit too, so there's some privacy, some form of privacy. But uh, I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to add like a couple beds here and let's, let's say there's a bit, couple more beds over here all right uh, now the block work around these so I can still modify this row as long as I replace it with combat steel this is yeah that's a thing I don't like my edge over here um, this happens an awful lot to this very typical that I don't like the first thing I do, and um, I'll keep on messing with it until I do like it. And that's kind of a way you can guarantee that if you put in enough time and effort, at least, you'll always like it. <laughs> because you can just try and try and try again. Now, I just added that there, but that looks really stupid lining up to here. So, don't like that row there, at least. But I don't mind the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop out that block too. And put this row here. Pop in one of these over here. And go around like that. Okay, so now that works out a little better for, for the opening. Um, not thrilled on this multiple tiered ceiling though. But I'll run with it now. This is just a, just an kind of an example this isn't actually a real creation that's ever going to turn into anything just just for video purposes okay so now we kind of squared that off um so being a crew area other parts i might want in the crew area i probably might have should have laid that out first now we already have a shower over there but we don't have a bathroom um so how would we put in a bathroom here that works? You know what? Let's put the let's put the toilet here. Yeah, I know that totally doesn't work with the block work above it again. Again, don't like the block work above it. So you know what? I tried, but we're just gonna have to like take this row, I think, and fill that in. Um, on that side at least. And then I don't want to see this edge either because I can't color or texture it or do anything with it so what I want to do is make it disappear um, but then I've got this wacky thing above it which is gonna kind of prevent me from doing that because of the other blocks I put there all right so uh, let's just put a thin wall in front of that so I can bury the uh, that little aspect of it uh, and you know, over here, I think I need to match up the same thing. So we're going to have to modify the ceiling again in there. I'll put that in there and then this looks bad. So 
let's let's get rid of the bad looking stuff there um, but we've got to have a block here because that is part of the hall so what else could I and whatever block I put here has to have a solid uh, uh, top on it um, so a little bit limited Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Every time, every every single time, I work on interior space, the same thing. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of planning, trying to figure out what the heck you're doing, um, and then a lot of experimentation on what's going to look good and what's not going to look good. And you won't know until you try. Um, a lot of times, but a lot of it's just trying to get things to line up. Okay, so. I got that in there, but that doesn't really jive with the frame I've got on the outside of this now, unfortunately. That just yeah, and I've got this little indentation there. Eh, doesn't look good. So you know what? I'm gonna have to just go back and use more of these, I think, because I went with the ultra thin blocks on the side. There's not a lot of fluctuation on what I can do in that case. And uh But, oh, uh, this being a hall block, that needs to be hall material. Okay, so now another thing I'm thinking about too is like surface area to add in like lights and things like that. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is mess with the ceiling uh, besides that little part there. So, again, we're going to say that this is a landing pad or something up here. And now I kind of want to do something maybe over here to make this look neater um, and try to find like something I can line it up with so it kind of lines up actually with the medical stuff on this side and the cargo boxes on this side so if I ripped out a chunk of the ceiling here again I can make some kind of design pattern just gotta make sure I'm not screwing up like what 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 would be the whole blocks outside all right, so now let's, we're going to have to go with, a, I think, a fairly simple shape here, though, because it's not too big of an area. But I do prefer to use this block often because of its uh, texturing purposes over the other, like, wedge block. How I place this, I can texture this different than that, which is, can make a lot of difference when you're uh, detailing stuff. So I did that. Um... So in this case, uh, I want to get some definition in here. So I'm going to go with this. Um, basically trying to make it look like there's some uh, some beams in here, but I need to keep the top solid and sealed. So I'll put them in like that. And we kind of, kind of a, again, a uniform pattern between the two sides. And let's see, then we, we're going to need combat steel in this area here. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do on the inside? Uh, oops. Okay, let's go with this. I guess. Uh, that's boring. All right, let's get a little curve action going on in here, just, just for the fun of it. Curvy, curvy there, and let's do some on the other side, but uh, it doesn't need to be combat steel here. So you got a bit of a uniform pattern kind of in the middle. Um, oh, yeah, you know how that's lining up to the ceiling? That just sucks, doesn't it? That looks stupid. Because I got the curve thing going on there. It doesn't align with this. Ah, that's all. That's all bad. Never mind. I'm right on the curvies there. Let's just go, let's think asymmetrically a bit. Um, so I want this time um, uh, edge on this side because of the thin blocks I'm using on the other side there. So I'm just going to go with the pattern across like that. This end one has to be combat steel. And, jeez, uh, I guess, you know, we're going to go really simple here, and I guess uh, just pop in a couple half blocks. I got to I gotta fill that one in, 
And if I'm doing that side, I want to keep the other side uniform to it. All right. So then we got a couple little areas uh, kind of hanging down there. All right. So we have our basic interior layout. So next step uh, typically is texturing. Um, so I don't have any custom color palette in here right now. So we're just going to go off the walls and I want to make another like I, what I want is like a two tone like grays and then an accent color. Um, so this is our stock default color palette. So the, uh, looking at the accent color, I'm not sure where I want to put that. Well, let's let's start with this red here. So I'm going to go to configure and say I'm not going to use this, this red at all. Um, so I'll click on that one, and what I want to do is uh, find a neat color. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of color I'm looking for. Let's do this a little different than I normally would do things. Let's say we want this, uh, you know, I've never done anything in this kind of shade before. Um, so different, different shade here. Now, whatever it looks like here, what I ended up doing, okay, so now S is saturation. This is your hue, saturation. Um, I think this stands for vibrance. I consider it intensity. What I want to do with this is I want to lower down its intensity and saturation because when they're really bright like this, it tends to look a lot more fake in the game. Um, so I'm gonna first I'm gonna I'm gonna yank down that intensity and I want it a little darker as well. So I'm also good or I yank down the saturation and then the intensity so that I'm going to end up with a tone more along the lines of something like this um, that's not too too bold okay so we've got that one set so what I'm going to do is I also want more gray so I'm going to take the stock gray I'm going to copy it I'll paste it to the block next to it I will lower down its intensity some I'll copy that again paste it to the next one lower it down even more okay so here's my gray tones, here's my accent color. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is have an LCD color as well. Like, I don't know what color lights I want in here yet. Um, completely optional. But uh, let's figure out where I want the accent. Um, now in this case, the most uniform area I've got here to add an accent color would probably be, at least in part, like on these beveled edges here. So... I'm gonna, I'll texture this in traditional fashion. Now on these beveled edges, you're, you're very limited on textures. What I typically do, especially if, you know, with uh, humans or MCRN, and a lot of times even Creel, is I'll use this particular texture, which has the little liney things in it. I will spray an area with that, like this. But I, uh, I have a big pro OCD problem, I guess, with lines that don't go anywhere. And I think if you all any of my other stuff you probably know that already I, uh, it's just not not acceptable how that is so I typically will always clean that up um, and methods of cleaning it up it's basically using the, uh, the the very flat texture right next to it and replacing lines that you don't like like that didn't look right um, that that doesn't look right um, this one this line goes nowhere right there and I mean, doesn't look right. Um, this doesn't look right. And this one kind of is okay, but maybe it should change its angle. As long as it looks kind of plausible, like there could be a, you know, a little opening slot there. I'll paint the inside of that too. But in this case, I'll just do, do a flat one. All right, so we, we, uh, we painted that. And you know what, I don't like this anymore. So. Let's see, let's pop, uh, let's put in a texture light right there. All right, so, um, flooring. Um, well, nah, let's keep on going with the walls. So on the bottom area here, uh, God, do I want, like, gray? Just trying to pick out a color scheme. Kind of works and a lot of times when I when I uh, put these in I'll like try to turn in both directions to see if one of them works out better than the other 
And sometimes I use this uh, cabinet looking texture or seam texture a lot because it, it does match well with the, the other textures. Um, and then you want to kind of mix stuff up occasionally. Like I might put in like a rain event there, something like that. So the ceiling right above there, I'm going to take this down a couple shades and just kind of blank it out with some more textures and get rid of all the, the stuff that doesn't look right, which is most of it, typically. Now that's even kind of weird, but, you know, what can you do? This one's bad, too. Um, so there's, with the cabinet texture, sometimes I'll take and do something like that because it does actually line up like that so you get a little something there um, this one here though I'll probably end up yanking that sooner or later all right so we've got those little chunks well part of them let's get this other part done here again kind of a weird color combo but you know so I've got that let's get in some more uh, I was just using standard gray I think for the walls here and cargo boxes okay let out some of that uh, get some kind of detail in here would be neat certain textures that I think just color better than others like this vent works pretty well this works pretty well um, things like that so there's some textures I just never use and others I, I'll use probably too many of them but um, all right, so let's see. If I had LCD like over this area, and I want, I'm trying to keep this area kind of uniform to that, I don't want a bright colored thing because I want to put LCDs over something dark usually so they're more visible. So, and there's limited options. So a lot of times I will use this cabinet texture again, maybe have the LCD like on part of that. Um, and let's black this whole thing. Let's, let's make this area below it the same color as that um, and cabinet textures limited texture options um, or for that I'm sorry uh, cargo extensions so let's just do kind of a uniform roll like that across the top and something like this over there and then we want a floor another problem don't have like any really legit floor textures maybe yeah so this is an area that I'll like rely on decals but I've got this the same color as the wall right now not liking that want to want to want a tone different so I'm going to go to this mid-tone gray okay and on the ceiling here well we can we can go dark on the ceiling fill that in kind of boring isn't it Okay, mid-tone gray is going to have more more use now. So rather than doing that, we're going to fill in Hmm. Now, how about just the bottom row? Just the bottom row, of that shade, top row, of this shade keeps it darker. Now we got a two-tone thing going on. All right. Uh next part, ceiling here, this little thing here. I'm not sure if I have these angled right. Yeah, but what color should the ceiling be? You know, I'm not sure, but I think I'm missing a color that I would want to use. So uh, we've got like this, but that might be a little bit too bright. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there. I'm going to copy it. Let's make another new tone. I'll paste it over here. And I want to take that down a little, little bit from where it was. So it's brighter than this, but not as bright as that. Somewhere in the middle. And uh, so let's try uh, let's try white ceiling or this color ceiling. And so in this case, uh, maybe I did rotate that right. I did ro if I didn't rotate this right when I filled in this, it would fill in the whole thing, and that would be the case of it's not rotated right. So extremely important on this part if you want to maintain that circle appearance in there, especially when you can accent it with different colors or textures. Both. 
So did that. Now nothing's really going to paint well over this. Uh, sometimes you can use some of this stuff and make interesting looking patterns or something, but usually not so much. So a lot of times I will just put in a very uh, basic texture that's really hard to tell the pattern on it. So it kind of blends in a little bit better. And let's see, what could we put here? Maybe something that kind of lines up with the seams that where it fits. Uh, often I will use this on these edges of these thin blocks, um, but that's not the only thing that works. There's a, quick, there's a few other textures that kind of fit there. But what I like about it is the lines all line up to the edge as well. Um, I'll just fill in that for now. And uh, then the, the top, uh, I'm going to change the tone here and just put in something else, something something else to look at. Okay, and then we're going to go with uh, this tone here for our ceiling color. For now, I'm just going to kind of mass fill most of this area at least. Alright, uh, how about a little bit on the insides there? And clean it up. Get rid of all the weird looking stuff. Alright, so over here, uh, this should probably be the same tone as the rest of that. So here, we'll, uh, uh, let's put in a little something different over here. Something that works at a half block. Uh, have a little lighty thing now, I guess. And we'll fill you in. Get rid of those stupid parts. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a ceiling. Alright, so flooring again. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with the mid-tone and just... I don't have a lot of floor space here to work with, but what I want to do is kind of line the one up to the other. But I also want to be conscious of a way into that area as well. Should I use flooring for that? Now, I can't put this flooring texture over this. Um, so this case, I guess, this might get modified, but we'll just say we've got a walk path there. It goes down a little bit in the center. That's an uh, oblong space there. All right, so medical area. Uh, here I'm actually going to use the full white um, because I try to use a brighter, brighter tone around the medical equipment just to have that more hospital look, I guess. So we'll do something like that. Uh, let's, and if I have to use some more texture lights here, that, that also works out all right. So get in some bigger ones maybe not that though yeah I'm get kind of picky over time uh, a couple of those okay now what this is missing and I'm gonna just do this for uh, purposes here I don't have any power or fuel or anything going to this this base so I'm gonna add in uh, some quickie things real quick here one of those, and give me a fuel tank. I'm just going to slap these somewhere else. And we'll fill you up. And turn you on. Alright, so now we've got power. Okay, so now I can see the texture lights. That, that does help too. Alright, uh, got the ceiling space here couple uh, open block areas right there which is kind of neat um, this gives you opportunity to do stuff uh, let's see do I want let's see we're all white on the ceiling here and a little bit on the inside but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start mixing that up a little bit Put in a couple of vent things. Oh, we don't have the same thing going on on the other side. Oh, we've got those going there. I probably should match that. I'm thinking now. 
match what's on the other side there for uniformity purposes. Here I'm going to just try to go dark in the middle, just split it up a little bit. And uh, if we texture this particular part, they do texture weird. So you're going to texture like three sides at once, and one of the sides is going to be not lined up to the other sides. Um, being where it is, you can kind of get away with that because you're not going to see it much in the end. Alright. So, let's see. We're starting to get there. Um, all the it's different different processes. So basically, I would end up texturing the rest of this this area the same way. Um, I'm just trying to move this forward a little bit. So this is these are a couple process steps that I that I do. Like first thing, obviously, part fitting, uh, can, uh, cargo extensions, or if if that's applicable, you know, place your parts. Try to build um, displays so the parts look like they should be there. Um, and then we get to another section here, which is uh, going to be all the other fun stuff. Uh, lighting decals um, and final detailing. So with lights, let me grab some lights. And uh, what else do I want here? Um, that's probably good enough. So now we're, we're, we're in space right now. It's dark. Um, I'm depending on a flashlight right now to see everything that's going on here. I want to illuminate this and make it look decent um, in the area. Uh, but, you know, I, I just feel compelled. I, I'm going to have to uh, just texture just at least at least the rest of this room up. Otherwise, it's going to feel off and bad. Some weird vents there. Neato. And then we're let's let's do some black in the middle of that. Let me just get this last part trimmed up here. So we've got something going on. And this wall here, let's go with the uniformity of using the uh, the gray they used on the other walls. Uh, how about a vent there? A couple vents. Fill this stuff in. And let's go with this uh, accent color around here for now, too. And we're just around the, the border trim. that pretty solid and on the inside I don't know yet uh, how about gosh yeah how about try it let's try this mid tone uh, it's the same as the walls it's kind of boring oh uh, it's not really the same as the walls all right a little bit more textured um, last thing floor just kind of want this to uh, be finalized I'm trying to do it all in one video so now I'm feeling like I'm uh, probably rushing this a bit you can spend a lot of time on interiors for sure it takes at least for me it takes me a lot longer to build, build an interior than it does exteriors typically i do get bored with the textures i put down on here i wish there was more i really do wish there's more stuff you could do Try to split it up a little bit. Uh, sometimes toning of colors, though, like this this area over here. Uh, you know what? We gotta we gotta just have this all the way across the board here for all these cargo extensions too. A trick that I like to do, um, especially when you can't texture things very well or do anything really neat and special, is change toning of uh, parts of it here. Um, so, like over here on the side here, what if we increase the intensity on this row underneath the, the parts going along the edges here? 
like that. So you got that color difference there, but then we could back that up with even more and uh, tone this out so it's different along the edge as well. Something like that. Sometimes it works out, gives you a little more detail, other time it doesn't look great. Like what I just put in, I don't think it looks great. So, um, I'll get rid of that a minute. See other options that you've got here is uh, no, I don't because I got the I got the mix of the cargo extensions that would touch part of that area, so I can't really do it. Well, anyway, good enough, good enough. Uh, let's paint that to match. Paint that to match. Okay, so this is. Let me grab in a part. Just throw in uh, advanced constructor real quick here. Where did it go? There it is. Something like that. Um, this is boring. This is boring. I used to uh, always like to make these uh, things over the constructors, but the problem is, is the constructor model kind of makes it so it, nothing ever lines up right anymore. It used to it used to be pretty neat um, the way there was like a, a screen that you could perfectly match to a, a particular block, and now that doesn't work anymore. Uh, that's all right, though. So I'm going to do a, just a, a little trimmy thing over the, the top of this because uh, why not? Add a little, add a little more to look at, I guess. You know, I don't, I don't like that open area on the top there. That's all right. It's eh, nah. I want, I want to make that concealed. So I'll just use a full thin block here, like that. All right. Well, anyway, lighting. Okay, so this part here has to do with what you want people to, where you want your light and how you want people to see it. Um, for instance, medical area, I want this area brighter. Um, but I, I want this area over here also illuminated. But I don't have any, like, nice spots on the ceiling that line up to anything to really do this very nicely. Um in this case. So let's uh, do something. I'm going to use uh, how about one of these. Uh, typical colors that I uh, use often is um, I, I, I use mostly spotlights but not entirely. Um, I, when I usually do spotlights for interior space I set the intensity to two. Colors that I'm using depends on the faction but uh, this one is widely used with the humans. Um, MCRN uses this a lot. Um, both factions can use the uh, the gray. Um, Creel will get into using this as well as sometimes the uh, cyan and magenta. Uh, but there's a lot of colors I typically just do not use. So, all right. Anyway, on this color, we're gonna set the range, and for now, I'm just gonna give it a kind of a generic spotlight angle. So then I can turn off my flashlight. We can sort of see what that looks like. Okay, so now here, what I uh, the objective, I want to make this area, I want to light up this part of the room. And how am I going to do that? So I'm going to grab one of these angled lights this time. Now this uh, will actually shoot the light at the direction it's facing, which is kind of neat. So you can kind of direct your light source down to an area. This one, I want it to be... Uh, white um, and we'll sign that down there um, bit generic right now but uh, so in this case I want it to be a more focused light so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower down its spotlight angle quite a bit um, and shine it right at that wall there um, it's not really doing it for me yet. So in this case, let's, uh, let's try going up one block in the intensity. Take down the angle one time. Okay, so it's all right. This this is just very boring in here right now, though. Um, 
not much to look at, kind of bleh, you know. And this is where I get into another process. Let's say this. Let's say that this area is considered done right now. Well, you know what? Let's let's do something back here too. Let's uh, make this look neater. Put some stuff here. There. Now our shower shower looks a little neater. Let's make it even more neater. Let's put in a different color back here. Ah, matching color to that. All right. Um, all right, so another another process, like I'm not totally happy with what I got going on here, but this is just a start. This is how they almost always end up. I, it's rare that, you know, it's ever like, yeah, that's perfect. I'm going to stop right there. I don't need to touch it anymore. It doesn't really work out that way. So, here, I just want to get this last area. Let me get some light. Just see a little bit. Just want at least this this part kind of fully finished off at least. Yeah, let's let's run an alternative texture in those two areas. Put trim, and we can just kind of fill that in. All right, a little bit better. Uh, so now I'm thinking I don't like the color there. Maybe I should uh, have that like this as well. That, but I'll leave this the same color just to break it up a little bit all right so next thing would be uh, well let's get into some uh, deco stuff uh, in a minute so let me grab a couple different kinds of deco things get some consoles and standard like deco blocks um, what can we do with these add in something neat to look at at least I thought we had a little thingy over here uh, let's change the background texture of that thing to something else not that but maybe if it was that color oh something something different something something unique to look at uh, still not, I'm not happy with the lighting, so I'm kind of looking at this room area here thinking, well, maybe I can do something with this chunk of the floor, uh, to, oh, no, I can't because of the cargo extensions. Never mind. All I can really do is add decals to it. Um, your, your options just really are limited. Uh, ooh. Darn it. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's get rid of the floor color here. Uh, adding in a little bit of something is better than nothing, usually. Depends on the theme you're going for and whatnot. Okay, a little, little square thingy over there. Uh, this area here is it's just a weird-shaped room. I'm trying to deal with it, but this is uh, very, very typical though. So it's rare that you, unless you really do a lot of pre-planning on the interior, you'd have. Uh, Stuff won't typically line up ideally for what you would like to do, maybe. Get rid of a little of those. All right, so what other things could we add in here for something to look at? Uh, it's not uncommon that I have very little, like, usable wall blocks you can place parts on either because I tr tend to put a lot of stuff in these things and try to get the detail levels up a lot so I don't even think I'm going to get any of that in here uh, okay this outer wall here I, got, I just want to do something with this looks there what can I do though A couple of those on the bottom side. How about a weird black row of... Oops. Something here on the inside. Trim this up. Okay. 
Okay, lighting's still dismal. Very, very dull. Not very bright in, in here. I'm going to mess with this light. Um, let's increase its angle, but I'm going to reduce its range a little bit. Try to get more of a bit of a focused light in that area. Um, I'm going to further and mess with this one a bit, too. Actually, let's try bringing that back up again. Okay, so we got light there. Now we would also want light around this door area over here. But in this case, what I want to do with the light is the other two are spotlights. Um, so they're directed, they're uh, lighting up one particular area or the other. In this case here too, like this is intensity three? No. Let me just crease that a little bit. I'm going to lower this down again. So again, it's a little bit more focused. But it needs to light up this though. Well, all right, so this light here, I'm going to call this a room ambience light. Um, so it's not going to be a spotlight. When I usually do room ambience, I have intensity of one. And the only factor here that matters is your color and range. So color, I'll have it match another color that I'm already using here, which would be probably be its primary color of this purplish shade. And then I'll figure out a range on it. Um, so when you add that into the mix, it kind of illuminates a little differently. So it will add some light to the ceiling. And basically, it's to me, I kind of look at this as more of an ambience light um, versus like these are like light sourced lights versus ambient lights. Um, creates a little bit different effect on either. Um, and honestly, there's not a whole lot in this room I really think is super awesome. I had no idea it was how it was going to come out when I started this. But uh, and this is where at this point here, though, Again, very, very typical. Um, I run into this all the time. Get it to this point. It's like, ah, it's all right, but it needs, but it, 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 it needs more. Um, so now it's like identifying what are the strong points of it? What are the weak points of it? Um, any, let's just pretend this room doesn't exist right now. Um, is there any areas of the room that don't look as good as the other areas of the room? Like, is there a big flat boringness somewhere? And then other areas are kind of neat and detailed. Um, uh, stuff like that. So I'll, I'll keep on, like, just doing all these little tweaks. Like, sometimes color changes. Like, I don't know if I like how I painted this um, right here. So I will might, uh, you know investigate with trying different shades over like a chunk like that um, maybe black that out again kind of like I just did there uh, maybe this area needs to be brighter Let's color all the parts uh, let's try to get a little complexity in here maybe a little bit of uh switch up the textures try to get a little bit more going on in the, the section um here maybe run some kind of texture that can align at those angles um you get the general idea and basically i would just keep on following that through to the other room and this is uh just something I wanted to kind of cover on, on how the interiors get built on the, the stuff. Um, and trust me, if this was an actual ship or creation that I, you know, was going to, you know, put out to the workshop, I'd probably be looking at a, probably another 45 minutes to an hour on this room before I was happy with it. Um, I mean, really, really happy with it. Um, and that would be messing with colors, lights, blocks, textures, decals. You name it, all, all part of final detailing, like uh, looking for anything that you can try to make better. Like little things like like over here, like I got this gray on the, on the top here. Maybe that's throwing me off. I don't like that necessarily. So what I'm going to do 
here if I was like final detailing and say this error already was textured in these locations. Um, I'm gonna try a different color here. Go like that maybe. Um, oh, and I missed this part over here, so uh, we'll put that in there. Same thing on this side. Uh, these vents here I think would look better uh, darker. So we'll darken those up a little bit. Um, yeah, but basically a lot of stuff like that until until you're really happy and then and then the last aspect I usually do is put in LCDs which can give you some more increased detail by you know even me like with almost everything I do I always for whatever reason put in like a uh, little LCD saying hey there's X amount of storage and this like you really need to know that I mean well I mean I mean you don't really need to know that but it adds detail it really adds detail, and that's uh, and that's why I like to do it. Um, I haven't done much with, or hardly any LCDs that don't say something worthwhile, though. You know, it's usually uh, with me at least. It's usually you know you got storage here, how much your, your capacity is. And if you go in the room, go up the elevator, it might be uh, something saying what floor you're on and what the other floors are. Uh, information LCDs um, typically what I use all you know it's probably just because I'm too lazy to make all the other ones and I haven't actually taken advantage yet of of uh, the other authors uh, really awesome LCDs they put out there for decoration and things like that there's a lot of that available I probably should get into that um, uh, using some of that too because I don't particularly enjoy making LCDs myself uh, I like the end result but making them is kind of a chore <laughs> All right, well, anyway, I hope this helped a little bit, at least in general aspects of, you know, how, how uh, room areas, uh, my, my process, at least, of doing a room area. There's a lot of ways to do it. This is just, just the way I, I typically do it. Usually, you end up liking the results in the end, uh, if you put enough time and effort into it, at least. Um, and a lot of this has to do with, like, chopping into the ceiling or chopping into the walls or trying to come up with some form of uniformity in obscure area rooms like what I was trying to simulate with this where the walls didn't all line up I couldn't do like perfect geometric patterns and stuff because it just doesn't work out with the room space I've got and then just try to deal with it well anyway that uh that's it for me today and uh, uh I will uh I'll try to do another part on, on some more tutorials uh, this week and probably going into next week. There's a few other topics I would like to uh, to show some things on. Um, this was just one of them. Um, oh, we'll see how they go. But, uh, you know, these are all kind of like, I don't have these like pre-planned. Like, well, besides like building this weird block formation here, it wasn't really pre-planned on how this thing was going to look. I just uh, want to go through the process of it. All right. See you later, everybody.